have to sow a seed you have to pay for counseling you pay for prayer fraud any prayer you have to pay for for god to answer you have been robbed in the brightest afternoon they tell you they want to pray for you then when they pray for you they say sow a seed stealing so god now is a contractor a nigerian contractor not even a foreign one that has to be mobilized before he carries out the project if you don't give god you cannot get where did you get that from it is in ghana one preacher blew me off my seat ghana accra <laughs> Accra. <laughs> I will not leave you alone. <laughs> I'm with you always. <laughs> I'm in Accra. We flew in with the evening flight because I was preaching the next morning. And the guy I came to preach for in Accra said to me, Dr. Damina, my spiritual father is preaching today. He knows you're coming to the conference. He actually likes you. He doesn't preach what you preach, but he really likes you. I think you should be in the conference tonight. Just, just listen to him for a few minutes. I said, you know I'm tired. He said, please, I have a beg of you. I said, okay, you're my host. Let's go. We got there sat, and they put me on the pulpit. On the pulpit. That's why I, I run away from the pulpit. Because... You know, you know, I'm not a bishop. I don't have a color. It's bishops that like the pulpit. Okay? Because they're the ones closer to God. You, you're far from God. You're in the altar court. They're in the Holy of Holies. <laughs> bishops like Pastor Matthew. <laughs> the Bible, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so now, they put all of us on the pulpit like spectacle. And the congregation watching us. And I'm like, oh God, if I'm going to leave here, how am I going to leave today? Because it makes it difficult for you to leave. So this guy begins to preach and he begins to say, he began to talk about, you know, levels of prosperity. Levels of prosperity. I know the whole game. I've been there before. I know all of that. I knew where he was getting to. But I wanted him to get there so that at least he, I, I'll be justified in my suspicion. So I'm waiting for this guy and he's working it well. He's working it well and the people are getting excited. He's working it well. He first of all outlines the promises. He outlines the blessings before giving the conditions. Smart trick. Then he now says, give. He says there are four levels of prosperity. Four levels. I'm like, that's right. This is another new insight. Four levels. <laughs> He said, look, give and it shall be given. Level one, good measure. Level two, press down. Level three, shaking together. Level four, running over. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> then he now begins to list the conditions to move from level one to level two. From level, I know the game. As if that wasn't enough, I was already getting disgusted because I hate to see lies told to the people of God. It just does not allow me to have peace. So then he now says, you know, if you do not pay tithe, these levels will not work. The foundational subscription that triggers the operation of these levels is tight. <laughs> If you don't pay tight, it will be tight. He said, even lions pay tight. I say, wonderful. <laughs> Today, I have come to Bible school. I'm going to let this thing. I've never had anywhere I was ever told in the Bible that lions pay tight. That one fascinated me. So now I became completely attentive. I've never had it before. He said, lions were sensible enough to pay tithe. If you don't pay tithe here, you are foolish. Lions are wiser than you. I'm waiting. And I said, you know, Daniel was thrown into the lions then. And as soon as Daniel was landing in, the lion said, we pay him as tithe. We will not eat him. We will give him up to God as tithe. So lions who are hungry offered Daniel as tight. <laughs> I stood up, took my Bible. I couldn't hide it anymore. I told my host, brother, I'm tired. Let me go and sleep. Because if I sit there in a short hour, I will say, it's a lie. <laughs> Glory! Your 
father loves you so much why you are yet a sinner christ died you didn't pay to be saved why do you need to pay for him to answer prayer why do you have to pay for him to do anything for you oh my bible tells me he that spared not his son but gave him up for us all how shall he not also be he freely give us all things I don't have to give God a dime for him to answer my prayer. This is the confidence that we have. That whatever we ask according to, uh, to, to his will, he heareth us. He that accepts, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. He that knocketh, the door shall be opened. So Father, I thank you that you hear me always. I don't need to pay a dime. I don't need to give nothing to get anything from God. God is my father. God is not my uncle. God is not my businessman. God is my father. And the spirit of adoption has been shed forth in your heart crying. Somebody shall Abba. That's my father. That's my father. I do not give to God because God will do something. I give to God because as a responsible son, I'm grateful. So in case you've been servicing somebody who's been collecting your money very, very wisely, you better stop that and get to know your father.